I am the lemon in her tea. Scoofy. <laughs> you thought about that too. I hate you for it. <laughs> well, welcome to another edition of In Between the Zone. I am the man of a thousand nicknames. Goofies. Yes. Andre on IG, Black American Dream. Twitter, Andre 1A Melton. And on Facebook, Andre Melton. Scoofy. Scoofy. This is my... How you put my card? Get my card This back. is my... Go ahead and, and spell your name out. Cravante Hurt. C-R-E-V-O-N-T-E-H-U-R-D. Facebook, Twitter, Cravante underscore her, Instagram. Is there another Act one? Act like you know. Is there another Act one? Act like you know. Mean? Act like you know. Jeez. Stop being goofy. Gosh. Uh, make sure that you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just put in the Flex Zone podcast. And it's the first one. Like us on Facebook and on Twitter and Instagram at the Flex Zone one And if you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to theflexzone1 at gmail.com. Let's hop right into it, Gravante. I wanna we wanna ask you guys, has it become the norm for ticket sales to be over one hundred dollars per game? No, that hasn't become the norm. Um ticket sales um depend on the place and uh, notice I said place first and how well the organization is doing. I think tickets will always be high in LA and New York, no matter how well <laughs> no matter how well or how, how bad or how whatever, how they're doing because it's LA and New York. Now, if we get the teams like Cleveland, where it's not a popular city, but they have the best player in the world on the team, yeah, I can see those tickets being over $100. Um, we go to the Milwaukee Bucks, probably not. You know what I'm saying? Did, um, the Phoenix Magic. Suns. Phoenix Suns. The Orlando Magic. Yeah, t- that, I don't think those will ever, probably when Dwight was there. I mean, it was over a hundred dollars, but I no, there's no way. Well, I mean, I'm I'm glad that you said it, the place because the place is first. Uh, I've been to New York and for a Knicks game, and those floor seats they are sky high. Couldn't tell. Mm-mm. Same thing with the Lakers in I the ble- Staples Center. I believe sky high tickets. Uh, I can go home to Baltimore and tell you that Orioles games for. Student night, it used to be $8 when they were losing. Mm -hmm. When they made that playoff push Mm -hmm. that season, student night tickets bumped up to $13. Now, to some people, it may not be high. But to a college student, (laughs) (laughs) as me and you have been, that that $5 goes a long way. I'm saying. And let's keep it in Baltimore. The Baltimore Ravens. What were their tickets like before they won the Super Bowl? Uh, They were very, very cheap. After right. two thousand, yeah. after two thousand, what happened? Two thousand skyrocketed. Then, 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 then we had a break. <laughs> then we had a break. It wasn't. It was inexpensive. Two thousand thirteen playoff. Once you get in that playoff push, uh, another perfect example. My boy, the savior, oh boy. Ben Simmons. There we go. When he arrived in Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen, oh those ticket sales they weren't that high. But then during the playoff push, no, those ticket mean. sales. What what does it mean? What does it mean? This means this means you're being extremely goofy. Red, stop. Red means stop. You're being extremely goofy. Stop. Do, do you have a point? I mean, you said stop. You're like being what, goofy. What, what, That's what this is. You're being goofy. Stop the goofiness. Nevertheless, savior. Those, t- those savior. Yes, he is the savior. Uh, those ticket sales were were sky high compared to your Wizards playoff tickets. I'm. I they mean, were, and th- those tickets for in Philadelphia were over one hundred dollars compared mean, to those Wizards tickets, which two of them equaled about a hundred dollars. So, I mean, Philadelphia was in a much was a much better team than the Washington Wizards. Um, oh, we know. And I <sighs> reset, <laughs> get on my nerves. Um, yeah, they were they were a better team, and they had better it. and they had better better talent <laughs> and more star power than us. We had John Wall, and that was just about it. Like, Bradley Bill is still kind of building himself with it. But Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, yeah, they're pretty up there. I mean, you think about certain teams like with like the Orlando Magic. We're just throwing out the Cincinnati Reds. I mean, <laughs> what you threw out the Milwaukee I mean, the, the, Bucks, the, the Cleveland so. Indians had a stretch where it wasn't, mm-hmm. where it wasn't good. 
the Chicago Cubs. Oh, <laughs> and now you talk about yes. hit, getting the World Series and all that. I couldn't, oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine what tickets are in, in Chicago. Too high. But but like I said, now go. How about San Antonio? Nah. It's quiet. They, it's, it's it's quiet down there, and they always they're. But they're always in playoff contention, so those tickets true. probably are uh, on the on the more expensive side. I don't know. When I think about the region, I don't think so because it's San Antonio, Texas. That's not even the lit part of Texas. Houston, I can see that. San Antonio, uh, probably not so much because it's not their fundamentals. A lot of people, we, we like to see scoring. We like to see offense. We like to see high flying. We like to see alley oops. San Antonio Spurs don't do any of that. I mean, so, but when you think about the San Antonio Spurs, you think about a team comparing them to the New England Patriots in, in football. So I think the, I think their tickets are probably over $100. I probably, I probably on average, maybe, but I, I don't think it would be crazy how like it is in LA or New York. Well, and uh, they win more than them. Well, I'm glad that you actually <laughs> said LA or New York because. Look at baseball, for example, where you have the Mets and the Yankees. You know for a fact. You know them Yankees. And as a, as a Yankees fan, them tickets are high. They are over $100. That's a fact. Per And these are nosebleeds tickets. Over $100. But, I mean, the Mets? Are you thinking that the Mets are going to be charging over $100? Absolutely not. They don't have any history. <laughs> well, well, not until at least they they get, they sign Tim Tebow. Then it'll probably be over. Lord, and then the ticket sales, they're gonna be letting people in for free. No, it's Tebow. Yeah, absolutely, because of Tebow. They can let him in. No, for no, free. no, no, because he can't can't throw. Not. Probably can't hit either. Tim Tebow. You know he's probably a better baseball player than his football player, though. Hey, yes, give that man some respect. Sorry, he can't throw. Sorry. All right, not sorry, but you know. All right, y'all. That was goofy. We're, we're, that was still goofy too. Not as goofy, but still goofy. Stop hating on people. Look, we're going to go to a quick break, y'all. Stay tuned for In Between the Zone. Hey, guys. This is Crevante Heard here. I am the senior producer and co-founder of The Flex Zone. Follow me, Crevante Heard, at C-R-E-V-O-N-T-E-H-U-R-D-E. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Crevante underscore Heard. I am the voice of reason on the show. I point out all goofiness when I see it, and trust me, there is a lot of it. Check us out. Ain't that right? Come get on, man. Get out of here. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. The goofiness. There it goes. What's good, everybody? You already know who it is. Drizzy Dre, Mr. One and Only, the man of a thousand nicknames. And all I'm saying is go ahead and like our Facebook page, The Flex Zone. You see us every Monday at 10 p.m. on WBGR. So you might as well go ahead and hit that like button for me. Not asking for much. Hit that like button. You already know what it is. Alright. The apple in her juice. Yuck. The orange in her juice. Goofy. Just gonna keep saying everything's goofy. Whatever synonym comes to mind. We're back. Most of the time it's goofy. We're back, y'all. In between the zone. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Flag Zone Podcast. Put that right in the search bar. And what are we, Cravante? It's the first one. Go like our Facebook page, The Flex Zone, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at The Flex Zone 1. And if you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to TheFlexZone1 at gmail.com. My Instagram is The Black American Dream. Carantes is C H. <laughs> you just gonna mess it up? That's what you're gonna do? Carvante Hurt, C R E V O N T E H U R D E. Facebook and Twitter, Carvante underscore Hurt on Instagram. All right. We want to jump right into our uh, last topic of the night. We want to ask you guys, who wins and loses in free agency? Well, it depends on, it obviously depends on the sport. There's no straight, the players win or the organization wins. Um, when we, let's talk about, because we can start with football. Football, Kirk Cousins, for y'all that don't know, has just got, he just received the first get fully guaranteed contract. For NFL player, not just NFL quarterback, NFL player. That is groundbreaking for the NFL. That's going to change the whole landscape of things and how things will be um, played moving forward for all players. I mean, I think about somebody like a Richard Sherman who negotiated his own contract, eliminating an agent. Hey, re- yeah. hey represent himself. Why not? That's less money you got to dish out. And that could be another path that players will look after and maybe take 
So in the NFL, are you saying that those play the players are winning in free agency? The the tides are shifting. I'm not going to say that the players are winning because the owners had quite of a, a stranglehold on the league for a while, but things are slowly shifting in the players' favor. And again, let us guys let us know what you think. Who is winning in free agent? Who wins and loses in free agency? Uh, the NBA. Um, NBA, I think. See, the NBA is, is less about money. And, and the only reason why football is really, really like money-based is because of the the longevity of it. The average the average for an NFL player, the average lifespan of an NFL player is, what, three, four years? Three years. And that's that's really, really nothing. Only the superstars last, last longer. Now, we go to the NBA. Um, it's more so... It's a player. It's a player's league. LeBron James in the decision. He had free agency. He had a stranglehold on free agency for about a. I think it was about a week. Um, probably a week, ten days, something, something like that. And nobody made any movements until LeBron James made his movement. He affected what Carmelo Anthony did. He affected Dwayne Wade. He and he affected uh, Chris Bosh. But that was a domino, a domino effect because Carmelo Anthony was being goofy, and he signed the extension for the New York Knicks. Not going, not going to dive deep into that well, at well, all. Well, well, for the, uh, he signed the extension with the, the Denver Nuggets, and then that affected his trade to, the New York Knicks because we were you were thinking about the aspect of am I just going to let him walk away for nothing or right, am I right, going right, to trade right. him and get something? Right. So LeBron James did have a domino effect with the decision, and then. Also with Kevin Durant, because when LeBron made that decision to go to Miami, right. when Kevin Durant's time was up, he decided to go from the Thunder to the Warriors. And look, look how that's changed everything, because now these now players are doing one-year deals, one- or two-year deals, two year with, deals the, with the option. Right. option. right. And see, but once again, Kevin Durant, it wasn't about money. That was a power move to win. Because he didn't get, he wasn't making what he was making in Oklahoma City, right? Like at all, especially when you got Steph Curry on the team. Steph Curry gonna get the max before anybody, you know. So it's more about players, free as far as free agency is concerned with the NBA. And then look at a sport like baseball. Uh, right now, Bryce Harper is the is the main guy that everybody's talking about. And he's going to get a blank check. <laughs> contract, offer, contract offers I'm hearing are, could be up to $500 million. And see, for, obviously, obviously money is no object <laughs> for, the, for the MLB because they throw money around like it's going out of style. Like, what, what's the average, what, six, seven years for a contract? I heard, heard up to 10. But yes, like somebody like Albert Pujols, who signed a 10-year deal with the Angels. But that's you, you see that the Angels got him on the... The end of his career because the Albert Pujols that was with the Cardinals winning a couple World Series mm -hmm. compared to the the Albert Pujols you see with the Angels, he's not putting up those same type of numbers. But that but that's the thing with these long contracts, these six, seven, going up to ten years, you're not going to have the same. Obviously, you're not going to have the same player you had when you first signed them. That's potentially somebody going from their prime. To the end of their career, prime. to well, well past that prime, like retirement pushing prime. retirement. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I mean, I, the money, the money is there, and I guess the con, the contract is, is a lot more stable than it is in the NFL until recently. I mean, I know you hate this, but look at wrestling. Okay. Wrestling has a free agent process as well. Uh, I think about somebody right now like AJ Styles, who. Went to TNA wrestling. So wait, so wait, can I stop you for a second? Is wrestling not an individual sport? It is an individual sport. So you're telling me that there is a free agency for individuals? Yes. Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to piece this together. <laughs> but please, okay, continue. Because it's the it's the same aspect as if a player in one of the sports that we just named was to go to a team. It's the same kind of <clears throat> aspect for an individual signing to a wrestling company. So like like I was saying, AJ Styles, for example, who would, went from TNA, the wrestling company, mm -hmm. to New Japan Wrestling. He's the hottest indie wrestler out there. The 
everybody's goal in wrestling is to make it to the WWE, okay. which he did. And in making it to WWE, there's usually a process that people go through the NXT program before they get to the main roster for WWE, which is what you see on Raw and SmackDown, their main shows. So AJ Styles was able to eclipse that and go straight from the indies in New Japan wrestling to straight to uh, WWE and then hit the main roster. I mean, I could, I mean, I could, I could honestly take it even back further with the with the WCW versus WWF days. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Still, still foggy, but okay. They, I had no idea that that was a free agency. I thought free agency only dealt with a team, teams and ownership and things like that. Nah, nah. This is it's a it's a whole deep level. With it. Ah, it's, a, it's a whole different goofy level. Okay, I got it. <laughs> well. It's not goofy, man. It's I just very. I, I, just, I almost didn't it's, catch. I almost didn't catch that either. It's very goofy. All right, so tell tell the people one more last time how they can find you. The C to the Izzo. <laughs> Crevante Hurt, C R E V O N C E H U R D E. Facebook, Twitter, Crevante underscore Hurt on Instagram, and you. I am the Black American Dream on Instagram, Goofy. Andre One A Melton on Twitter, and Andre Melton on Facebook. But most importantly, y'all subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Flex Zone. Just put in the Flex Zone podcast in that search bar, and what are we, Cravante? The first option that pops right up. Go ahead and subscribe, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Flex Zone One. And if you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to the Flex Zone One at gmail.com. In the words of my boy Byron, we gone. Peace. Peace.